So Michael Moore has been appearing on MSNBC quite a bit lately, and it's surprising to me that they keep bringing him back because he's making incredibly solid points. So you would think that they would feel as if they need to kind of silence him and push him away, but nonetheless, he appeared again and he made a phenomenal point about Bernie Sanders and why young people are flocking to Bernie Sanders. And everything he said here wasn't just important, but it was incredibly constructive because people who tune into MSNBC, they usually don't hear this message. They usually don't get to hear about Bernie Sanders in a positive light. But nonetheless, Michael Moore did a phenomenal job here about educating the MSNBC viewer base who will be voting in the Democratic Party primary and Democratic strategists who I'm assuming tune in to MSNBC religiously, which is why they're so terrible at their jobs. But nonetheless, that's a different story for a different day. This is what Michael Moore had to say about Bernie Sanders. I'll tell you the one person, as you've pointed out, that remains steady and consistent is Bernie Sanders. He has not gone down. He only either stays where he is or he goes up. And he's mostly either in second place or he's in first place, depending on what week it is in which state, Nevada, et cetera, where, where he has pulled number one. He's number one with 18 to 35 year olds. And he's never dropped out of first place with young adults, number one with Latino voters. Uh, so, you know, it's Can really- ask, why, why those, yeah. we just put those numbers up. Yeah, yeah, He yeah. is, and we saw this in 2016, young voters, he does extremely well. Yeah. And it falls off a cliff when you get to about 45 years old. Why, yeah. why is that? Yeah. Um, a jealousy when the older, <laughs> the older you get, he should be sitting there and just watching TV. You know, it's like, I don't know. But it's a great question. Why do the youngest people trust the oldest candidate? Sure. I'd pay attention to that because and I think my opinion is it's their future. He's fighting for them. It's not his future. He's in his future. Whatever he is doing to fight for climate change, for, for uh, better wages, uh, Medicare for all, go down the whole list, uh, he's doing that for them. Not for him. He doesn't need free college. He doesn't, he doesn't, he's, he is, this is what they love about him, is that here is this, this, this man who is in his 70s fighting for us so that we get a future, so that we even have a planet that we can breathe on in a few years. They see that and they know he's the real deal. He's not BSing them and and he's not going to give in to any of the corporate interests. Is there is there there's that word you always hear in politics, I, authenticity. Yeah. Um, does he come across as less scripted, less packaged? Is is that part of what you're, what you're Obviously. Yeah. Yes. Everything. You know, he doesn't have his own personal stylist. He doesn't he doesn't have somebody telling him what to say. He has no large contributors at all, you know, saying, you know, Bernie, if you could just cool it a little bit on this or give us a little bit of that. Here's the problem. This is what I'm really worried about. And I want people to think about over the holiday here is that I know a lot of people, they come on the show here and they talk about, you know, we've got to get a more moderate candidate. We've got to we won't win. Actually, this will lose if we go more to the center. We're going to lose uh, this. Here's what the center is offering Here's the inspiration that comes from the center. Um, uh, I'm not going to guarantee that health care is a human right, but what I am going to do is I'm going to get you vouchers or there's going to be these uh, health uh, health. Uh, 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 um. Is that is that Biden and Buttigieg? Is that what you're describing? Yes. And the others, the others that are in the center, the way that, that even Michael Bloomberg is talking now, they're all about they, they think that what we need to do is to tell people, let's go backward. Let's go back to, yes, you know, you should be, no, that we can't have it. We can't have free college. Well, why not? Because everybody in my generation who went to college, either they went for free. The entire UC system in California was free. The, the SUNY system here in New York, mostly free. Uh, out in Michigan, you could go to the University of Michigan for $1,000 a year. It's, it's amazing that these kids have put up with putting themselves 40, 50, 60,000 or more dollars in debt. That's why anybody who says, no, we need to moderate and we need to go back to being more conservative Democrats, those days are gone. So that first point about young people is incredibly important because when young people turn out to vote, general turnout is higher overall and Democrats end up winning up and down the ballot. So if Bernie Sanders were the nominee and he got a lot of young people to come out and vote, Democrats across the country would turn out in higher numbers and they could retake the Senate and they would probably keep the House. Like, turnout is incredibly important and I can't stress this enough. Every single election 
is one big get out the vote campaign. It's not really about defeating the Republicans so much as it is getting out your own base and registering new voters. Because the thing about young voters is we don't really realize the amount of power that we have. We are going to decide this election, regardless if we stay home or come out in droves to vote. We will decide this election and we can actually take our future into our own hands if we vote, if we participate in the primary. Now, the thing about primaries is not a lot of people participate in them. More people will participate and pay attention to general elections. So we just need young people to realize that if they come out and vote during the primary, they can make a difference and perhaps make the most amount of difference because I think the primary for Bernie is going to be the biggest hurdle. Going up against Donald Trump will be a little bit easier for him, but in the primary, there's a lot of Democrats with 17, 18 people still running. Um, he's going to need their votes. So if they just realize that coming out to vote will decide this election, and they realized how much power they had, that really would be a step in the right direction. Now, why they support Bernie, Michael Moore says it's their future. He's fighting for them. It's not his future. He's in his future. Whatever he is doing to fight for climate change, for better wages, Medicare for all, go down the whole list. He's doing that for them, not for him. He doesn't need free college. And that's such an important point. And I think this is obvious to a lot of people. Bernie Sanders is not running for himself. If he had, you know, ambitions to be president, don't you think that he would have decided to run back in the 90s or early 2000s? We all know that Bernie Sanders decided to begrudgingly run because back in 2016, Hillary Clinton was a very right-wing conservative Democrat and Elizabeth Warren was too afraid to step up and challenge Hillary Clinton. So Bernie Sanders decided to step in and offer voters an alternative and little did he know, he catalyzed a nationwide movement. So now he has to see his vision all the way through. Now contrast that with people like Pete Buttigieg. I mean, does anyone really believe that Pete Buttigieg is running because of a particular policy? or a duty to the country, he's running because he wants to be the president. He wants to be in a position of power. He wants to be adored in the way that Barack Obama is adored. Usually, people who run for president, they do it for power and influence. And I think that most of the time, like if you're running for president, you genuinely must be a sociopath because I can't see how anyone would want that job. Um, I mean, we need someone who really doesn't want to be president. And Bernie is that perfect person. He's not running because he's worried about his career. The man is almost 80 years old. He's running because he believes he is the only person capable at this point in time who can run, who's old enough to run, who can actually affect change. And even if he's not able to get his agenda passed, he knows the importance of galvanizing a movement and just getting us on that trajectory of social democracy. That's incredibly important. So what Michael Moore said here is accurate. Now, he also made a point about centrism and how running to the right is going to be a losing strategy. Now, the fact that we have to remind people of this is absurd to me because we just tried this strategy in 2016. Trump is president. So we shouldn't have to say this. The fact that we do really speaks to how horrible American politics has become. But nonetheless, Michael Moore said, if we go more to the center, we're going to lose. They're telling people we should go backward, basically. And he's right, because even though we haven't actually secured policies like Medicare for All or Free College, to say that, you know, we should just settle for uh, college affordability and a public option. We've changed dialogue to where we're starting to really think about these things as human rights, but now we've gone back. We've decided, you know what, maybe healthcare isn't actually a human right. Maybe college shouldn't be free for everyone. Maybe it should just be something that's means tested and slightly more affordable. Maybe we pour a little bit more subsidies into college and hope that that works. So that is essentially us being regressive. If we choose to settle for someone who is more centrist, like Pete Buttigieg and Joe Biden, I mean, we've worked so hard over the past couple of years, especially people on the ground, fighting for Medicare for All, canvassing for Medicare for All, educating people about Medicare for All. So to just opt for someone like Joe Biden and Pete Buttigieg, all of the hard work that you put in would be undone. So even if we don't have those policies, we are going backwards if we nominate someone who doesn't support those policies. 
And he says, it's amazing what these kids have put up with by putting themselves in debt. Yeah. We're just asking to have the social and economic mobility that our parents and grandparents had. That's what we're asking. But yet when we ask that our tax dollars benefit us, we get lambasted by boomers who suggest that we just want everything for free because we're lazy. No, the economy has changed. And Bernie Sanders is the only person who acknowledges the reality of the country and capitalism and the economy. And he has the right policy prescriptions that would actually benefit our lives. Nobody else has that. Nobody else is actually going to be effective at fighting for these things because nobody else has a movement behind them. So I'm just surprised that MSNBC keeps bringing on Michael Moore, even though he's making these great points, even though he's actually speaking truth to power. It's shocking to me genuinely, and I hope that they continue to invite him on because even if most people who tune into MSNBC probably won't see that segment, I mean, anytime we're able to penetrate their bubble and get a little bit of progressivism onto MSNBC, then I think that that's a good thing because a lot of people, like it or not, still tune into MSNBC religiously. And um, that's a problem. But until we can get some better alternative that we can turn the left onto, then we have to get as many people on MSNBC like Michael Moore as possible who will actually say the right thing and not continue to give Democrats horrible advice as everyone else does on that program.